if you're a builder, I promise this will be the best 20 minutes of your next three days because uh, we've worked with over 150 startups in the last three years, many of which are the who's who of crypto at the earliest stage. So we learned a lot of lessons and we're gonna distill all these lessons with you uh, in the next 20 minutes. So we've worked with, for example, Synthetix, Xerox, Kyber, Tensor, Stepan at the earliest stage. And of, of course, many failures. And so we're gonna share uh, some of the key ingredients for success and failures with you guys in the next 20 minutes. So we're gonna talk about today how to find a winning idea and also a winning team in crypto. So myself, Imran, uh, we're partners at Alliance Style. We'll be giving presentation for about five minutes each. So how to find the winning idea in crypto. Um, one of the best ways to build a winning idea, to find a winning idea in crypto is to build something that you yourself want to use. And that should be fairly intuitive. I'll, I'll explain why, why that's the case. Because, and this is not really unique to crypto, by the way. Um, building a startup is almost like finding a secret. And it takes a long time to find that secret. It takes a lot of really good intuition into the market that you're operating in. And guess what? If you are the user of your own product, you'll, you're going to have the best intuition about the market that you're operating in. Fairly intuitive. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, Tensor, which is now the number one um, NFT marketplace on Solana. Uh, we supported them at the earliest stage. Those guys, when they applied to Align Style, uh, they were building something completely different. They were building a, some random NFT pricing uh, protocol. Uh, obviously, we knew it, it was not going to work. But these guys have been in Solana NFTs for two years before they applied. And so they really, and they were DGENs themselves. They were NFT traders themselves. So eventually they built, they had this idea of building an NFT marketplace for pro traders such as themselves. And every time I talk to them, every time they talk to us about a new feature, a new product idea, it's always about, oh, would I want to use this myself? And as, that's always one of the really great ways, uh, likely ways for you to find a, a good idea. And this is not just unique to crypto, it's everywhere in startups. So that's one. The second way um, to build, um, to find a, really, a winning idea in crypto. And unfortunately, this is gonna sound pretty discouraging. Because the way to find winning ideas is to be in the space for long enough of time and really focus on the space full time, day in, day out for a long period of time. And that usually takes one to two years at least. And why is that the case? Well, that is the case because crypto is such a counterintuitive space, right? I'll give you some of the things in crypto that are counter counterintuitive that, that even web, web two people don't really appreciate. So for example, in crypto, if you build decentralized applications, you're not supposed to move fast and break things because crypto handles money. So if you move fast and break things, you can lose for good. You're gonna lose your reputation for good. So that's one of the counterintuitive things um, that, that crypto is about. So, and it takes a long time to appreciate th these things. So being in crypto for long enough of a time will help. Unfortunately, a lot of founders coming from Web2, especially in the bear market, they pivot back into Web2, including AI or, or whatever, or whatever the latest hype cycle is. They pivot back right before the critical juncture of that one or two years, right before the time they find that secret that I was talking about. And you don't want to do that. You want to stick to crypto for at least enough time for you to develop the intuition. The next way to find a winning idea is to explore uh, the intersection of your previous domain 
uh, of expertise and crypto. Uh, this one should be also fairly intuitive. Uh, Helium is a very good example. If you guys know Helium, that's the uh, decentralized uh, HubSpot network. Uh, and the founder, Amir, uh, he spent almost a decade in network engineering. And at some point, uh, he was like, maybe I can apply the idea of Bitcoin, uh, this decentralized compute, using tokens to incentivize people to participate in the network. And so that's how uh, she figured out the, the idea of, of uh, or the original idea of, of Helium. And so if you come from, for example, uh, I don't know, imaging, like uh, aerial imaging, right? Like drones or whatever, you can think about maybe using drones to capture images uh, in a decentralized network and build some sort of Google Earth kind of product, for example. Um, think about some of the ways in which crypto could potentially help with your existing domain of expertise. So these are some of the ways to find winning ideas. Now, what are some of the ways not to find winning ideas? And this will sound really controversial. Talking to users is actually usually not the way to find the winning idea. I'm not saying you should not talk to users. Talking to users is absolutely crit critical. But some of the best ideas I've seen, they always come from, organically come from their intuition. Intuition is, is where the best ideas come from, almost all the time. You should talk to users once you have the product out and learn why people do or do not use the product. Again, this touches on the three points that I brought up before, especially the second point of being in crypto for a long time and develop the intuition. So talking to users counterintuitively is usually, of course, there's always exceptions, but usually it's not the, the best way where the best ideas come about. And the next one is uh, reading a thesis that, that VCs put out. Uh, some of you are laughing because uh, you're, you do that. I can tell you do that. And I'll tell you why this is not a good idea. There's a couple of reasons. Um, one is every time you read a thesis that VCs put out, chances are, especially the, the, the super famous popular VCs on, on, on crypto Twitter, chances are 10,000 other people read the same thing. And I know this for a fact because every time some, someone, I don't know, Kyle Samani or Paradigm or whatever, what, every time they put out a thesis, we receive a bunch of applications to Alliance Style that are building the exact same thing. And this is a really bad idea because if you just decide to build something because VCs think it's a good idea, you don't fully understand. Again, like you don't have the intuition, the deep intuition as to why, why this product matters. And you're competing with 10,000 other applications. And this is why... Uh, it's not a good idea to read, uh, uh, to use v VC, what VCs put out on Twitter as a, uh, the, 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 the key determining factor for why you want to build a, a product. So uh, very straightforward. Uh, I'll pass it over to, to Imran to talk about how to find uh, the best teammates to work together on. Hi, guys. So the next five to 10 minutes, I'm going to help you think about how to find the right co-founder or to hire your first like employee in your, in your company. But primarily, this is about finding your first co-founder. And the reason why I think this is important is because primarily at hackathons, when people are meeting with others just to figure out an idea, they typically may have no idea that they may have a lightning in the bottle moment. And when they do, then that co-founder is the co-founder for the rest of your life, right? So what I want you to do is to, within the next five to 10 minutes, uh, I'm going to help you assess who is going to be the best team member for you to work with for the next 10 years. And the first is the why, the what, and synergy. Can you align on ideas quickly is like the number one example. Like if you were to meet with someone and you're ideating on a certain idea that you want to hack on, um, are you able to ideate like smoothly with the person that you're talking to? Um, can you support uh, each other through stress? So an example of this is being able to understand if or if not, they can help you with the stress and the situations that you can go through. And number three is high agency. 
does that person uh, that you're working with have high agency? Can they take on tasks and know that they can fulfill that, those tasks? So those are some of the things that I would look for when you're looking for a uh, person that you want to hack with. And so sometimes when we get uh, uh, applications within Alliance, we see solo founders that apply. And there's nothing wrong with solo founders. There's many successful uh, solo founders that have succeeded. But an interesting story I want to like bring up to you was uh, the story of Paul Graham at YC and uh, Drew Houston of Dropbox. Drew Houston actually applied to YC two times and he was denied. And the reason why he was denied to the program was the fact that he was just a solo co-founder. And Drew asked uh, Paul, like, why can't I just, you know, build this idea that I have, which was Dropbox at the time. And Paul Graham said, that, Paul Graham specifically said, is uh, you need moral support and you need someone that can have synergistic value so that you can focus on one area of growth while the other person can focus on the other. Uh, similar with Coinbase, you had Fred and Brian and others in the space. You need moral support, you need someone that can understand you, and you need someone that can help ideate throughout the process. And so when, when you think about looking for a co-founder or a hacker, what, what are the things that you'd want to look for? Well, there's two ways that you can go about it. The first way is, are you a domain expert yourself? Are you, do you have a secret that no one else does about the expertise that you have? A, a clear example is what Chow just said earlier with the intersection of domain expertise and crypto. If you have that domain expertise, then you may want someone that can um, you know, help you with business and growth. Let's say you are a business and growth lead, um, then maybe you'd want someone that has a very deep technical background or a secret that they know that can help support the, the project that you're working on. And, and I think this is a very clear, important like, message I wanna give you guys is that you have to do this early on because if you don't, then there is going to be like a lot of overlap and then stress, and then it could lead to things that you don't want it to go through. So finding that early on is going to be very, very important for you. Uh, two is, and I think this is the second reason why most founders break up very early on, is the fact that stress is a very, you know, it's going to happen, right? You're going to work 80 to 100 hours a week. And stress is going to ultimately make or break a startup. That's like hands down. And so what you want to look for when you're looking through, you know, the folks that, that are in this room or outside this room is can they deal with stress? Do they have emotional, high emotional intelligence or EQ? And, and the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because eventually uh, towards the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you a five minute test that you could take and use this test to find others and ask specific questions within five minutes to find out if they're a good match for you or not. So there's a reason for the whole, uh, some of the questions I'm bringing up here. The third is, do they compliment you? Um, because as I've said, as I've mentioned earlier, is let's just say that you have two technical folks uh, that are co-founders. The, the biggest problem that I see here is like, you know, the, the different unique insights and advantages that they have when it comes to building product. And one co-founder could have a very specific tech stack that they want to work with, and that's all they want to work with. And I've seen many hackers early on that kind of fight, and they end up not delivering a product or even an MVP after the hackathon is done. So it's important to really figure out if that person that you're hacking with is going to be uh, aligned in the vision, and are they able to complement you in regards to where you're going to go next. So here's a quick five minute test, uh, uh, the questions I ask. Um, and in, in fact, this, it turns out these questions um, is how the Tensor team got started. Uh, and the Tensor team, if you know, is the number one NFT marketplace in Solana. And the way they found each other was through this test. Um, I gave you a minimal version because this is good for just a hackathon, uh, but for a real uh, you know, startup, uh, there is a longer list that I can share with you guys later. But I'm going to go through this quickly. Some, is some are obvious, so I'm not going to go through it, but some aren't. One question I want to bring up is, are you control or wealth oriented? I think this is important because, um, you know, some co-founders want control. Some just care about money and they want to help build a product to a certain point and allow the, 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 the actual founder that wants to lead, lead to take uh, leadership and run with it. 
it's easy, it's much easier to find this out early on because you know who is going to run what, and usually um, it turns out to be a good decision. And and the reason why I bring this up is because many co-founders, you'll notice this, like you know, in mid up growth, you'll see like co-founders kind of fighting with each other. One wants to be the CEO, the other wants to be CEO. Then you see this co-CEO role that kind of is given, and it's usually a red flag when I, when I, when you see a co-CEO role. So um, that's why I was kind of bearish on Salesforce. Um, uh, so that's one question. The question, the second question uh, that I want to highlight is what it like, if you are like really serious about starting a startup, like if you're here to start a startup, you know, you, the one question you want to ask is where is the, your, uh, the priority of starting a startup in your life, right? Is it your number one priority? Is it number three? You're just here to hack and have fun, make friends. Um, you could quickly figure out like who's going to align with you and who's not. So I'd say that's a uh, number two important question. And some of the other questions are, you know, a little bit more detailed, but like, what are the things that are important to you? Like, what type of product do you like? You know, what type of culture do you like? Um, types of uh, folks that you want to hire. Um, another question I want to point out is like, what happens if we, if we make no money in 12 months? Um, and then finally, here's a second set of questions. Um, if you're to pick one thing, what is your superpower? I think this is a very, another good question that you should ask someone. Um, what role do you have envisioned for me? Um, how do you deal with stress? What is your biggest weakness? Um, and at the end of the, the, the project, you should kind of like decompress and ask questions in terms of like, did you guys enjoy working with each other? Did you see eye to eye? Um, did the ideas that were generated really come to fruition? Um, and so these are like the set of questions that you should ask when you're looking for someone, because this will kind of like boil it down to the people that you really want to align with so that you can start a startup uh, or build an idea here at ETH Global and then be able to work on a winning startup idea moving forward. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find us at the Alliance booth, but uh, yeah, thank you for coming.